Folks, have you guys ever been to Ohio? Well, let me tell you, I lived there for 18 months, and it was an experience and a half. I lived in a little town called Youngstown, Ohio. My next guest I have is from the state of Ohio, what a coincidence. But now she lives in Baltimore, Maryland, and we are thankful that she lives here. She is doing amazing things in the industry from Baltimore all across the world. And I'm so excited to have her on the No Pixel of Dark podcast. This is going to be an amazing episode. We're celebrating International Women's History Month, and it's going to be amazing. So the next voice you hear will be this amazing guest coming on, folks. The No Picks After Dark podcast is fueled by Zeke's Coffee. Have you tried their coffee yet? I'm telling you, there's something different about it. Maybe it's because they roast their beans in a fluid coffee roaster, which provides the most accurate roasting temperatures and made with love. You will just have to check it out for yourself and try their delicious food while you're at it. Open now for curbside service, online ordering, carry out, and they also do wholesale. Visit Zeke's Coffee at 4719 Hartford Road. Open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. And Sunday, 8 to 5 p.m. Kitchen closes at 3 p.m. Or visit Zeke'sCoffee.com and you too can be fueled by Zeke's. is Baltimore's largest maker space, offering access to tools ranging from 3D printers to welder and training in how to use them. OpenWorks also offers affordable studio space, a coffee shop, and fun free events throughout the year. But OpenWorks is more than a public workshop. It's a community of creative professionals, students, seniors, entrepreneurs, and makers of all kinds. Check out the website at www.openworksbmore.org or Instagram at open underscore works underscore bmore for class schedules, membership options, and more. Welcome to the No Picks at the Dark Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Dante. We have an amazing guest today. You know, I, I get so excited about these guests that I have coming on because they blow my mind just to listen to hear what they're talking about. And they drop so many jewels and gems. And you'll understand when I say jewels and gems a little later on. But it's just so exciting to have this guest on. Miss Dietrich Cortales, how are you doing today? I'm good, Aaron. How are you? Good, good. Thanks we, for having me. We got to read the bio because you've been doing some big things out here. And I think people really need to know who you are. Because, again, I'm, it's a blessing and honor to have you on the show. Thank you. And I'm excited for my listeners to learn about what you do and what you have going on and how you've gotten there, okay? Thank you. So let's read the bio real quick. All right. Ms. Dietrich Cortales is a seasoned leader with over 30 years' experience in business development, retail management, account management, or organizational leadership. She's a professional and exceptional strategic vision and drive for the development of people. Currently, she's a member of the Pandora North American Executive leadership team. She is has full responsibility for the NAM franchise and wholesale business locations, sales strategy, operations, and real estate. Joined Pandora in 2011. During her time, she has served in various roles, including training manager, retail, franchise director, and director of sales for the Eastern U.S. She holds a BA in management at marketing from Union Mount Union and a CEG and a coaching and development certification from Coach University. 2009, Deidre was the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society Women, Women of the Year for fundraising. She continues her passion for philanthropy, I always must say word out folks, as a current mem- board member of the Ed Block Courage Awards Foundation since 2019. Her top achievements is raising her daughters, Callie and Alexa, with her husband, Nick, of 23 years. And of course, their dogs, Ollie and Louie. While Deidre clearly has a full plate, she continues her passion for fitness, health, and wellness throughout her journey of life welcome to the no pixel the dark show again thank you thanks excited to be here we gotta give we always, we always we have to give a round of applause for <laughs> you definitely, right, definitely we gotta give salute as the young people say we have to give you your flowers and that means oh. giving your props because you gotta give people the credit the credit while they're on this earth oh, that's not you. that's not waiting to the end so thank you for making time on a saturday this beautiful saturday come down hang out in northeast baltimore Thank you for fitting me in on a Saturday with my schedule. Hey, you know, last time I spoke to you, you were flying jets from here to Florida. And I was like, you know what? Get, I'll get it. We'll find. We'll figure this game out. We'll figure it out. So tell us a little bit about you. Um, 
What, let's go back. What's your title at Pandora? Where's it again? What's your title? Sure, let's sure. Let's go there first. I'm the vice president of wholesale for North America. Okay. So I run the wholesale division because we're split up into retail, our own channels, and then the wholesale division, which is our franchisees, uh, our jewelers, department store. Okay, so and people probably like Pandora. Why is Pandora in Baltimore? That's the question. So Pandora's national headquarters is in Baltimore. Correct. And how long has it been in Baltimore for? Well, we've been in Baltimore, the city, for I think now over six or seven years, right around when the riots happened. Okay. I remember that, that the, when the riot hit was my first day in my chair in the building and we had to evacuate. But we're from Columbia, Maryland. We have our distribution facility for all of North America based in Columbia. That's where we started about 15 years ago. And then we um, split some offices and came to the city for the executive teams. Okay. Awesome. 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 So let's take you back from what part of Ohio are you from? Where are you? <laughs> from Ohio. Let me back into that. So <laughs> I'll give you the area, which is Canton, Ohio, okay. which is known for the Football Hall of Fame, right? Everybody knows where that is. But I was born and raised about 45 minutes from there, Salem, Ohio, which was close to Youngstown. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I, I went to college right in the middle, Mount Union, now called the University of Mount Union, known for its D3 National Football Championships. Don't they have like a purple jersey, something like that? Is they that... do. The Mount Union Purple Raiders fits hey. in with the Ravens. Hey, 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 <laughs> there we go. I, that was just a guess out of nowhere, but I, go I, on. I felt like I felt felt the spirit on that one. So how let's, let's take us through this journey with you because we're going to celebrate International Women's History Month. And I really wanted you on the show because I want somebody to listen to this episode and say, I aspire to do what she's doing. I aspire, I can do this. I want to hear the story. I want to make sure maybe my daughter, maybe my son can inspire that. And that's what I really want out of this, this whole month because you're doing amazing things and it's a lot of hard work and dedication and sacrifice that we have to put out there. So let's take us through the journey of you, um, life, you graduate from Mount Union, you end up Youngstown, mm -hmm. Ohio. Okay. the first job. Go ahead. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. first job, you said, Okay, that's yeah, your show. Sure, sure. It's your show. Sure. <laughs> it's your show. <sure. laughs> so um, I thought I wanted to be a buyer initially. Well, actually, I thought I wanted to be a doctor. I started in pre-med, and that didn't go so well. And my dad was like, okay, you need to get a business degree. Get moving. This is it. So I switched majors, went to summer school, ended up getting a business degree, and I thought I wanted to be a buyer. Well, so I got a, my first job was with Gantos Women's Clothing. It'll set me back a few years in Youngstown, Ohio. And you had to start in the store. So you had to do the six month rotation of, you know, different aspects of, of learning really retail from the ground up. And I really value that to this day. End of the six months are like, okay, we have a buyer's job or assistant buyer's job for you in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I was like, mm mm. Let me see what else, what else you have out there. What else you got for me? <laughs> and they said, or you could go be an assistant manager at, in Cockeysville, Maryland at Hunt Valley Mall. Ooh. That's taking it back because now it's the mall's like, totally different. Right. So I took a shot, drove out here. I thought I was driving to the big city until I was driving on 83 South, almost to Cockeysville, and a cow literally crosses the highway. So I thought I got out of Ohio. Anyhow, live in a hotel for a little while, found a spot, and then the rest is history. I loved it out here. I, I stayed. I've lived in the county. I lived in the city for many years prior to getting married. And I just, I love Maryland because it just has so much to offer. It's so close to everything, New York, D.C., the beach. Baltimore's a great city of its own. And I ended up staying. I, I love your story because we have something in common, actually, folks. A lot of people don't know this about me, but... Um, when I was graduating from my junior year of college, I wanted to be a buyer also. <laughs> and I wanted to be a three-piece suit. I wanted to be cool. I wanted to work in Manhattan. And my parents were like, absolutely not. <laughs> I'm not paying no Manhattan apartment prices. And I remember that because it was really life-changing for me because I wouldn't be doing this podcast right now if I would have took that route. Um, because I knew I was good with people. I knew I could sell things. I knew about profit and loss. She's, that was what I did. That's what I learned in college. And I didn't take that route. But hearing what you went through, I, I love learning. And just it just it just warms my heart because it brings me back to those years like, I'm going to work for Saks Fifth Avenue or Birdolph Goodman. That's where I want to be, you know. And we all take different paths to where we are now. So you got here. You're in Maryland. Um, what like, you, how, how long did you work this one company? How long did you work mm -hmm. for them for? I think about maybe two and a half years or so, moved up to like an associate manager. And, you know, back then you think you know more than you do. 
right? So you're, you jump jobs a little more often. I went to the Gap for a few years. You know, I went to this structure. Now it's Express for oh, Men. Wow. You know, just <clears throat> short gigs. And I kept, but I kept wanting to grow. Oh, I thought I was ready to be a district manager, and the Gap wouldn't give me the job. So then I went to the body shop, the hair and skincare company. That was my first district manager job. And I remember that like it was such a big thing. I went and bought my first coach briefcase because I said, <laughs> if I become a DM, that's what I'm buying myself, right? That was like my aspirational goal. And, you know, I just, I, I loved people. <clears throat> I love driving sales. You know, that buzz you get from it from a huge Saturday and the registers are rolling. And, you know, and then um, I went to Victoria's Secret. And I learned a great deal from that, from Victoria's Secret brands back in the day where Les Wexner owned all the different divisions, right? Express, Structure, Bath and Body Works, White Barn Candle. Back then, they even owned Abercrombie and Fitch. Like, people don't realize that. They owned the malls. And they had such a good training ground. I'd go back to Columbus, Ohio, <clears throat> you know, to go to the office and whatnot, and I had a couple of different roles with them. And my last role was my favorite. It was a regional learning manager, but I was traveling all over the country. And I had just had my second daughter, Alexa, in 2003. And it was hard enough being, you know, a mom of, of a youngster. My husband has his own business, so he was super supportive. And then I was like, I can't travel every week. I went on one trip, cried myself to sleep that night. I'll never forget it. And I said, I got to find something else. I got to find something at least local, right, to be able to be a little bit more grounded. So I went and became, it was funny, my, my children were going to Celebrity Learning Centers, um, which is now Celebrity Schools. Um, and uh, my husband knew the owner. And, you know, I was talking to him. I'd bump into him in the hallway and, and whatnot. And I said, why don't you have people in dress code? Or why don't you have this or that? And, you know, he said, why don't you come put your money where your mouth is and come work for me? So... Went and worked for him for six years, and we did a lot of great stuff together and expanded and grew. One woman of the year for lymphoma leukemia fundraising, and, you know, it brought me to this point to where I am now at Pandora. So right. We'll get we'll get a little bit of Pandora. We'll, yeah. get, we'll get there. That'll be the second part of the, the episode. <clears throat> so what things did you learn in your younger career, young mm -hmm. part of your career, that you could give advice to the people that are listening today you wish you to learn because the, the game doesn't change at all. It's the same game. It just technology changes. Exactly. That's the only thing that changes. Um, because I see a lot in my, from what I've seen, a lot of younger adults don't know how to communicate. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to speak. They don't know how to present presentations. Uh, you know, presentations, everything. When you walk in that front door, being punctual. What things do you see sure. back in the day that you wish you could have learned or been a little bit stronger about that you could help somebody else with? I think my, one of my first lessons was being open to learning. You think you know everything and you don't have a clue, right? I think another piece, and, and this has really resonated with me later almost, don't question everything. Things happen for a reason. If you're offered to go this direction or that direction, um, it's meant to be. And you think and you look in, in the moment, you're like, oh my gosh, that this, I, I don't know about this. Why is this happening to me? Why did I get that kind of feedback? Or why didn't I get that promotion? And then when you look back, you realize exactly where you're supposed to be in that moment. So now later in life, I, I think about that more when challenging things happen. I'm like, I reground myself. It's supposed to be this way. Control what I can control. I think another piece is hard work, you know? I've seen with different generations, whether it's, you know, Gen Z, the millennials, whatnot, bottom line is you got to work hard. You want to get ahead. It's not a 40 hour work week, mm. but you can balance it. You can have eight hour days and you might need to have a 14 hour day, right? You can balance all that. Never take anything for granted. That's the one thing my father told me. You have to keep giving your best each and every day. You can't let off the gas. It, you just can't because someone could come in that's better, smarter, faster, whatever, and, and, and take it away from you. So you always have to stay competitive. You know, I learned that the hard way when I was working for this <clears throat> company. I'm not going to name them. I love them. They're, they're a great company. And I worked for them for 13 years. And I didn't understand rejection. I didn't understand that. I, 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 I didn't know if the feedback was constructive or to tear me down. I didn't, I didn't know that. Uh, I remember when I put my, I remember when I put my two week notice in for the 13 years of the company, the district manager came and saw me and said, Hey man, what can we do to keep you here? And that meant the world to me for him to drive all of a sudden, all of a sudden he lived waiting on the other side of Maryland and came to see me. So 
you have been an integral part of this company. What can we do? And I said, man, I need some weekends off. And again, I worked in retail. So he was like, you know, I can't do that. I was like, well, can we do every other? He was like, we can do stuff like that. I was like, but he's like, but you're going to want more. And what you, you have, you, there's things coming for bigger and better for you. And we know that. And I said, okay. And I remember I put it, whatever I did on Monday or Tuesday, did my replacement on Friday. And I, it, I cried because I thought I was very special. And then I learned the corporate game. You're replaced real quick. So those are things I learned that I can wish I could still just from what I've seen and just. But I think that's a really valid point and something that we, you know, I I try to talk about with my team is, you know, <clears throat> give feedback along the way, positive and opportunity. People want to know where they stand. They want to know what they can do to grow and find out what's important to them because maybe they should have found that out from you three years ago, right? And how do they, and, and if weekends wasn't a thing, maybe you could have gone a different route with them, right? That would have met your need, but then you would have felt, you know, valued and challenged. And I think it's making people feel valued for what they're good at. And, and it's super important. It's super important. Well, folks, we'll be right back after these messages. The No Picks After Dark podcast is proudly partnered with Maggie's Farm. Located at 4341 Hartford Road, Maggie's Farm offers a unique dining experience with delicious handcrafted cocktails and mouthwatering cuisine from falafels to scallops and everyone's favorites, honey sriracha cauliflower wings. Open for dinner from 4 p.m. until 10 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday, and for brunch, Saturday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., and Sunday from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., with delectable chicken and waffles, shrimp and grits, biscuits and gravy, and more. Check out Maggie's Farm on Instagram and Facebook for daily and weekly food specials. Folks, we are back with Miss Dietrich Cortez. I'm so happy that she's on the show. I mean, she is really dropping jewels and gems, like I always say. And she's really about to talk about the jewels in a second. Because we're going to talk about that. I'm so excited to talk about that. So, you talk a lot about family. How was the support for you going through this process? You know, you you have a love for your kids, your daughters. And maintaining balances. I ask all this, people, you know, how Nick, support if he's doing his thing. How was the support of just, they saying your, your career is taking off. How was the support system? Was, did you mom, did your family move here to help you? Like, give us a little, little background. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, lived out here, as I said, probably longer now than I, than I have in Ohio and about 20, I think two years ago or so, cause my oldest daughter's 21, um, my mother moved out here after my father passed away and only child. So I uh, had my mom, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law for a little while. He's gone now. And uh, my husband is a support system. And my husband is a gem. I mean, he puts up now with three hardcore, tough, uh, high-maintenance ladies in his house. <laughs> That's why we have two boy dogs. And um, he's he's been amazing. And I don't think I could have gotten and done what I've done without him. You know, And we're similar enough uh, in the really grounded priorities, which is family – you know, making the best out of holidays, uh, the sports, the girls, you know, being present and then, um, different enough in our styles. And he's a little bit more laid back than I am. I'm a little more intense. He's had his own businesses. He actually owned a nightclub and restaurants in Baltimore. Uh, very, you know, very great reputation for his, uh, um, he's, a, uh, owns a business broker account, uh, BCV. And it took a, it took a village, right? It, when the kids are little, it's like, oh, you know, I'm going to work every day and I'm traveling. Oh, someone's sick. Oh, the, you know, the child care is calling. I mean, you go through that. And then you go to the next phase of, you know, elementary school is just a beautiful time. And then they hit middle school. And then, you know, you have to be present in a different way. You have to listen more and help them through some of the, you know, the mean girl times and all that, which, 
you know, kind of doesn't end. Um, and then you get into high school and, you know, they're thinking about their future. They're, they're wanting to live their best life, but then they're worried about what's next for them. And, you know, all you want is the best for your kids and you want to guide them, but yet not control them. You know, it's challenging how much of a helicopter parent versus not and let them make mistakes and fall and skin their knees, but hope they don't do it twice, you know, keep them grounded in family and what's important. And, I honestly could not be, and I'm going to get emotional about it, like could not be more proud of the two women that I have raised. They're, one's going to grad school, one's going to college next year. And um, it's important to me that I set the best example of you can be a working mom and do it all. I also am very honest with them. They see me laugh. They see me cry. They see me cuss. They see me yell. They say, I don't know if I want to work for you, mom. You know, <laughs> they, they, have, they have seen it all. They've been to my conferences. I make them a part because all of it is who I am you know, and what makes me to who I am. I love it because you're showing them, you show them the, like, this is how, this, this is how the world works. Mm -hmm. This is what life going on. I love that. I love that. So Pandora, how do we get here? Because I mean, they're worldwide. I mean, their headquarters is in the Netherlands, right? Denmark, Co Copenhagen. Co Copenhagen, Copenhagen. Okay. Sorry. Copenhagen. Denmark, yeah. And I mean, how did you get to like, how did it even happen? I mean, I'm blown away by like the company by itself. I'm happy that it's here in Maryland. I didn't know about Pandora was here until like mm -hmm. probably about six, six, six or seven years ago. And I just didn't, I didn't know it was here. So how did you get involved there? How did you work and what's your first job there? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, you know, back to it's meant to be, um, I started to look, um, at a time when I was ready to kind of get back into retail out of the childcare industry, get back into retail and there's Under Armour and there was Pandora. I found out here right. and we made the choice and, and I didn't take a lot of different jobs or promotions because we made the choice that we would not relocate. My husband's grounded here. You know, his business is very much about relationships. So I worked my career as best as I could knowing around that and being, you know, a mom's priority. So I had a friend of mine call me and said, Hey, there's a position at Pandora. It's that ahead of training. And I said, well, I have training background from sales. Um, you know, it's different and I'll, I'll go talk to him. Mm -hmm. And it was funny because the founder of Pandora, thus why we started in Columbia, Maryland had walked in and he was, he had the Pandora had just gone through an IPO and he was just kind of advising. He walks in his golf shorts and who the blank are you, you know, like just bigger than life, the Scandinavian guy. And, and, uh, I interviewed and, and, and they hired me as this head of training and, you know, it was a, a pay cut, different job, different world. But I got to tell you, it was awesome. And it was the best decision I've made. Um, you know, I started out in training. I took different roles along the way. I expanded into the director of retail, which was all the franchise divisions and uh, stores in all of North America. So all the mall stores, then got some of the wholesale experience. You know, I've been to Thailand. It's funny, I, my Facebook, I think it was six years ago today, I was in Phuket, Thailand, <laughs> hanging out with the Tigers, wow. you know, and uh, it just, you know, because our factories are in Bangkok and, uh, you know, been to Copenhagen. It just, it's been an amazing experience. My job has changed over the 10 years, multiple ways. I've been given experiences and uh, avenues that, you know, I don't think I ever would have, have had a chance to do. Oh, I love hearing that. I love hearing that. That's amazing. That just to see the world mm -hmm. on somebody else's dime. Mm -hmm. You get to see mm -hmm. it, understand. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, and you're learning, but you're learning though. Absolutely. At the whole time. So, you know, you guys moved to downtown Baltimore. How mm -hmm. long ago? Um, it was right around the riots. When so was it was about six, 15, 16 yeah. at that time. Yeah. 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 And then, um, you know, you moved here from Columbia. Mm hmm. Uh, what? What has been the reception since you've been here, like sure, downtown? Sure, sure. And we still have the Columbia. That's our, our, our distribution okay. plant and customer service, everyone. Great team there. And then we have some of the team based here in Baltimore. And, you know, it was awesome just to drive up and see the logo on the top yeah. of the building. And, you know, it's uh, it's on the purple color right now mm -hmm. for, you know, for Ravens. we got to figure out how to change it to the orange again for the Orioles. Um, a beautiful building. Uh, I think it helped the city. It helped us because obviously, you know, when you're a global national retail brand, it's hard to attract talent sometimes to certain areas. People don't even know where Columbia is, right? In mm -hmm. some aspects of the world. And you're working in Manhattan. You're like, well, I don't want to go live in Columbia. <laughs> right. So it helped attract some better talent and differences. Um, which was, it was amazing. And, um, it's been a great experience down there. We, you know, participate in the Baltimore run fest, um, the Ed block foundation, and then COVID hits. 
<laughs> yeah. So yeah, we're gonna get into that because so let's rewind real quick. Yeah. So what things? So people are gonna ask what things does Pandora do to the community? That's always gonna be mm -hmm. that's the question people always want to know. And that you just said it. Yep. The Run Fest and Ed Block. Right Kurt, in the, Baltimore. The the great thing about us or, is though, or the greater area it doesn't matter. Right. Either. Well, the great thing about us though is we're all over the country. Mm -hmm. Right. So we have. We participate in, um, you know, uh, gay pride days and all, all the walks again, pre COVID, um, you know, the, um, foundations for breast cancer, mm -hmm. our franchisees do a lot, um, with philanthropy all in their own individual areas all over the country. And our big one, you know, that we've been globally is with UNICEF, okay. you know, so I'm just, I'm proud that you, we have the diversity to do different things because we are a global brand. I love it. I love hearing that. So. The pandemic hits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what what what's going through your mind when we get the announcement that I mean everybody's closing down on March thirteenth? I remember that day like it was yesterday. <clears throat> you're telling your associates you're working from home. Retail as you know it, you grown up on it, is mm -hmm. totally different now. The game mm -hmm. has changed. Now we're online. Online is like online sales probably skyrocket at this mm -hmm. point. It's a whole different ball game. You, now you have retail shops, malls that malls are, that, that's a whole different thing, mm -hmm. but malls are going through their thing right now mm -hmm. where it's kind of like a dying thing, like a dinosaur kind of. It's up and down. Right. Right. It's up and down. So what, what happens? Tell us, walk through when you just, you're going through that process with your company, like with the company, what not. Right. So at that point I was a member of the executive team. So we just descended on calls and okay, what do we do first, right? And, and the good news is we manufacture our own product. Right. So we didn't have to deal with, you know, supply chain issues, thank God, and a lot of that, right? So we we're like, we keep e-com open. How do we, who runs e-com? Where are they gonna be based? Do we need people in the, you know, in, in the vault? That team there deserves a medal okay. because they came in first. And so we had to reconfigure the way the Columbia office was set up. The team there was unbelievable. You know, the full PPP, you know, where all all of that stuff and um uh that kept us afloat and then you know we had to figure out okay how do we work differently so then teams calls and this and you're reconfiguring everything everything that you've ever done and it was a little easier for the field team because we're used to being remote but then how is everything else done you, right and so then okay we start to open back up Okay, you have people that, you know, some field team members that may have some health challenges. So mm -hmm. do we force them back in the stores or what do we do? And then, so we did virtual visits. So, you know, you do a FaceTime call or, or whatever with your owners and this small, and the, the, the smaller guys, the our multi-brand dealers, the jewelers, they came out of the gate first with, with curbside, mm -hmm. with selling on Instagram live, Facebook live. They're the real pioneers in, in retail, the small business owners. And I think we've got to continue to support them them because they helped the economy because it was their bread and butter, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the coffee shops, the little guys that are not owned by these national chains. Then we were one of the first, um, retailers to open back up in the malls. Let's figure out a way. So we, all of this buy online, pick up in store, buy online, return in store, all that, which was not traditional retail back in the day. Okay. How do we figure this out now? <laughs> and we, it was sloppy. It was messy. <laughs> it was gritty. But we did, and now we're fine tuning all that because the consumer wants to shop differently now. You know, even though we're, you know, coming out of this to a point, they've trained to shop more online. They've been trained to pull up, bring the stuff. I mean, I never ordered groceries in my entire life until, you know, this year. And I was like, well, this is kind of handy. You know, so total redo of thinking. And you had to really operate in the gray. And you had to be really comfortable with being uncomfortable every day you're exactly right I, I love i love hearing that and you know it's a blessing i think we're on the other end of mm -hmm. this pandemic mm -hmm. and endemic whatever you want to call it and you know a lot of companies can't say they've made it um so it's fortunate that you know a lot of people you guys have made it um did you guys have any issues with layoffs or anything like that 
in that front time period? Or? No, we had to do some with some of the store teams for a short amount of time. Okay. The, the, the corporate stores that we own, you know, we have uh, businesses in both Disney parks on both coasts. We had a little bit of that, um, but the majority of people were not. And we were super blessed again because we manufacture our own goods. Our margins are better. So we had a little bit more, you know, money, fortunately, to be able to keep a lot of people employed. Now, I've spoken to like a lot of uh, company owners who have said <clears throat> that they now have hired more on the e-commerce side, meaning mm -hmm. more delivery, mm -hmm. more of that, because that's a busier thing for you. Have you guys seen that on your end? Is that picked up or is it, I mean, cause jewelry to me is like, I want to touch it. Mm -hmm. I want to feel it. So that to me, I want to look at, it. I want to make sure it glistens in the, light, in the right light. I want to, you right. know, that's right. just how I think of when I think of jewelry. You know, it, yes, e-com was on fire for those first, you know, couple right. of years. But when we opened back up, we opened back up on fire. It was okay. amazing. I had friends calling me like, are you okay? Are you gonna get laid off? We know retail's so tough. Thank goodness the product that we sell, it's affordable luxury mm -hmm. and it has meaning to everyone. You can buy a charm that means something to you, but it can have a totally different meaning to someone else. So it was something that people, and then people had disposable income. People weren't going out to eat. Mm -hmm. They weren't traveling, but they wanted something that was a little next level, felt better, not just a t-shirt or, or jeans. Um, and we've, we've maintained, we've maintained and, and it's a blessing. We're growing. We're adding, you know, more people. I know that's the big question always. Are we leaving Baltimore? Hey, you know, I wasn't <laughs> yeah, I going to go there. Gonna ask, uh, <laughs> I get the question uh, all the you, time. You know, the listeners are going to want to know listeners. Can you give us an exclusive I, or what? Where are you dropping us on a, a note picks in a dark podcast today? What's going no on? Picks, no picks. <laughs> um, you know, so we've, we've entertained a lot of different things. You know, when we, when we start talking to some brokers on the what ifs, you know, then the media descended right now, we have no plans to leave. We'll decide when the lease term is up, but we do, we thought about, do we downsize? Do we, but we're growing and you know, the expense of re, you know, working the whole building and the way our stairs are, you know, set it's, it's too big of an expense. Right. Um, but we also like Baltimore, you know, it's, it's very commutable everywhere. So we're here to stay right now, you know, tomorrow, who knows it can change. I'm not the big boss, but, um, we're good. And we've been back in the office and, and in the remote, we're going to do 50% of our time starting, you know, this month in March. Um, back in and uh, give people still that uh, ability to have some flexibility. I love, I love, you just said something that just amazing. You're giving people that flexibility mm -hmm. because I can tell you right now, a lot of companies are understanding, like, you can't quit cold turkey. You can't just drop a person back into something right. that they've been gone. Um, I, we talked offline about just saying like how a lot of companies, people are leaving companies left and right. They're mm -hmm. like, guess what? I worked at home for two years. <laughs> I, I, if I can't do this, I'll find something else. And a lot of companies are doing that now. They're mm -hmm. like switching the front where 50, 50 kind of mm -hmm. like, which to me mm -hmm. is fair. Right. As long as the work's getting done, are you guys, people are probably going to ask this question. You want to know, are you guys hiring on like levels, corporate levels? Are you guys hiring? Absolutely. And the store, like, how does that work out? And, um, it's a process pretty competitive. Uh, and, uh, and like, I yes. guess the turnaround, how does that work? I mean, just, just yes. a little, a little sure. sneak, a little sure. sneak. Uh, most challenging hiring environment ever in the existence of my career. Okay. Um, in the stores, um, because it, people are paying more, you're competing against the Amazons of the world mm -hmm. um, in every aspect, from our logistics center in Columbia to the corporate office. It, it's a, it's a um, employee's market, I should say, mm -hmm. right? Not the employer's market. We're hiring for lots of different positions. We post on Pandora.net. LinkedIn. Um, but yeah, it's, we're growing and we want people, great talent to grow with. It's, it's a priority for us right now. I love, love to hear it. So just throughout your, what is the secret sauce that you have to for your success? What is the secret sauce? Is there something that like that, that every day you're like, I, when I get up in the morning, I get up and I put on some biggie <laughs> and I guess I, and I, I get pumped. I'm like, I go in the mindset, I'm about to conquer the world. And I'm like, you know, give zero Fs. And I'm like, I'm ready to go in. And then when I come in, I look like I'm playing classical music. But what I'm saying is like, what is your secret sauce to get to maintain your sanity every day? Cause mental health is very important. Mm -hmm. How are you maintaining that aspect of your life? And what's your secret sauce? 
you know, personally, this last year was almost broke me. It was the hardest year of my life. I had to move my mom into an assisted living in the middle of the pandemic. She had a lot of health and, and some, you know, dementia setting in. You have kids that not sure if they're remote or not. They're going to college or not going to college. And here I am with a huge responsibility of all these people that work for me mm -hmm. and keeping them, you know, employed, focused, you know, moving forward. And it was tough. I don't know if I took much vacation time. Um, I, I, I love what I do. I love people, you know, and I love the product we sell. I mean, you have to be passionate about that. I'm not sure I can go sell, you know, I don't know, hammers maybe. I mean, sure I could sell something, but you know, I have to be passionate about it. What keeps me going is number one, to set the best example for my girls. I don't have the luxury of laying around in bed feeling sorry for myself. I might complain a little bit, you know, everybody does and you gotta get yourself moving and I do love Madonna, so I will play some Madonna. Okay. I love rap, <laughs> um, you know, turned up as loud as I can. I love EDM, chain smokers are my fave. <laughs> Um, you know, I'm a kid at heart. I still think I'm 25, you know, in my brain. Um, but I lead with my heart. I lead to help make everyone better. I challenge myself to be better each and every day. And I don't believe in settling for mediocrity, which can be exhausting, honestly, at times. All right. And then what well, I mean, where can we find things on Pandora? Anything, any exciting news, anything mm -hmm, exciting? Mm -hmm. Cause we talked about something that was very exciting happening right now. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to talk about that or not. Sure, sure. Um, but um, we're exciting things you guys got going on. Mm -hmm. So go ahead. It's your floor. We have some great top secret things I can't tell you about yet that are coming um, for the back half of the year. Um, you know, I think that we're always thinking about how do we continue to make our product affordable but aspirational. We are the number one jewelry brand in the world right now. We are ranked as the number one. You know, we have great uh, consumer awareness. Um, and it's it's an exciting, you know, what we're doing for sustainability and, you know, our environment. I think we're at a place, and I have to attribute it to this, our, our global president who's been with us now for about three years for getting us on a path of you know, profits with principles, the right way in, in a product that everyone can relate to. Mm. So if you want to spend a thousand for something, we have it. If you want to spend 45 or 50 for a charm, because that's what you have, they love it. And you know, our Gen Z population love our rings. You know, it's a place that it's like the gateway. I mean, it's with my girls. They're like, oh mom, I love the rings. And you know, so it's great that we have something for everyone. So you guys have replaced breakfast at Tiffany's, huh? <laughs> we sure have. <laughs> Tiffany's are going down. <laughs> so I always ask these questions because this is always a fun part, last fun part of the show. And it's rapid fire. Brunch or dinner? Dinner. What's your favorite dinner of all time? If you could have one meal right now, what would you have? Lobster and steak. Mm, okay. Crabs or crab cakes? Crabs. I like the whole experience. It's I fun. always tell people it's a good talking. You yep. hear yourself it's on great. You're talking. It's great. Snowballs or ice cream? That's a tough one. Ice cream. <laughs> Although I'll get, I love peanut butter and chocolate ice cream, but then I'll get a peanut butter and chocolate snowball. Got but you. I do like ice cream. Got you. Mm -hmm. And what is the best advice you've ever received? Wow. That's a tough one. Um, don't settle for anything but the best. Folks, you heard it here first. <laughs> International Women's History Month, thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been an amazing experience. I'm so happy that you came on, hang out with us for a little bit today. Uh, I'm excited for this episode, and I hope it's able to inspire people, inspire men, women, whoever, whatever you may be, to say, hey, I can do this. I can achieve these goals and this success. You know, from training development to now VP, VP, right? Or mm -hmm. sales. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. That's huge. You know, it went from... Doing work, you think about it, you changed a whole job from working in schools to now doing jewelry. You can do it. And that's what's all about the positivity about the show. Any last words? You want to say anything before we get out, get out of here? Thank you. Thank you. You're doing great work. Hey, I appreciate you taking time. Folks, love, peace, brown. <laughs>